stand and lift up our hands For the joy of the Lord is our strength We bow down and worship Him now How great, how awesome is He Together we sing It's a joy to be part of this wonderful Bible study and I thank you all for your responses and reflections on the last class. We studied about how the organisms gave rights to organization, the church. How koinonia, the fellowship, gave rise to ecclesia, the church, in the last class. And we saw the importance of us being part of the fellowship. We also saw that the first century fellowship had problem, a deep problem, and how that problem was solved. They did not give attention to the problem. 
they did not leave the problem as it is, but they had resources as a solution for that problem. And they moved forward in the mission and God added people into the fellowship and the church was being birthed. This evening, we will focus on the plan and strategy of Jesus with respect to his church. How is God expecting to prepare and present the church? This is very crucial subject for us to understand, very important subject to understand because if we understand how God is expecting to prepare his church, we can align ourselves according to that expectation and start contributing towards that expectation and then we can grow as a church so that he can present us well on that last day. My dear people of God, this evening we will dwell on how God is expecting to prepare and present his church. Every institution, every organization has the motto, has the goal to achieve. Whether it is an educational organization, institution or some multinational company or any other organization or institution. Every organization, every organization in the world has a goal to achieve. Similarly, God also has a goal for his church. He's working towards that goal. He wants the pastors to work towards that goal. He wants the fellowship of Jesus to work towards the goal so that he can form a church which is acceptable in the sight of God. The first century ch church in the book of the Acts of the Apostles, yes, it was acceptable in the sight of God. The work between the people of the church and the God of the church was so collaborated that we see many verses last week that God added, added, multiplied, and that is the word we see. And the church grew and it spread all through Asia and Europe. My dear people of God, this evening we will see how God is expecting to prepare and present his church. If you would like to be part of that mission, then this study is for you. We will just go out of the book of the Acts of the Apostles because we need to understand the concept so that we can compare that concept to what is happening in the Acts of the Apostles. Turn with me to Paul's letter to Ephesians, chapter 5, verses from 25 to 27. The analogy is being used here. The metaphor is husband and the wife. Husbands, love your wife as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her that he might sanctify her, having, bless, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word, so that he might present the church to himself in splendor, without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that might be holy without blemish. Preparation and presentation is what we see in these two verses. He brings in the example of husband and the wife. I would like all of us to read another version which is Young's literal translation which is also very interesting for us to listen to. I urge all of us to listen to this translation. It says, the husband's Love your own wives, as also the Christ did love the assembly and did give himself for it, that he might sanctify it, having cleansed it with the bathing of the water in the saying that he might present it to himself, 
the assembly in glory not having spot or wrinkle or any of such things but that it may be holy and unblemished my dear people of god this is the strategy of jesus to the church this is his strategy to the body of christ which i and you are part of we need to work towards this strategy of jesus as the body of jesus christ so the relationship between the husband and the wife is that they are soul mates before they are husband and wife similarly the church needs to work on the soul the fellowship koinonia before they function as a church but unfortunately we are trying to work on the organization rather than the organism again we come back to the same concept that we learned last week organism and organization many of us focus on the organization the organization doesn't have much to do if the organism is weak organization will die one day if the organism is stronger no matter what the problem is the organization will sustain that is how even in the multinational companies employees are important they contribute to the organizational growth that is how they are chosen into the company if their skill and abilities do not contribute much to the growth of the organization they are called and they are given warnings and if even after the warnings if they don't listen they are fired my dear people of god can we afford to lead a life without knowing the strategy of jesus for the body of christ that is a question i and you need to answer what happens if we do not work as the principle is we will lose our track on the journey and we will reach a different destination altogether we need to work towards this strategy of jesus to the body of christ isn't it that important to you and to me isn't it that important to your family and to my family to your children and to my children we will read again verse 25 husbands love your wives as christ loved the church and gave himself up for her giving one self to the other with our lives that is why god says in marriage both of them the husband and wife become one they are not two anymore the merging of the souls happen in the marriage they give each other up they give themselves to each other even if it cost them their own life that is what is been told here by paul husbands love your wives as christ loved the church and gave himself up for her that he might sanctify her having cleansed her by the washing of the water with the word my dear people of god when jesus was speaking to nicodemus in john chapter 3 he says one crucial truth which is very very important unless the more unless the man is born of the water and the spirit here it is there washing of water with the word word is the spirit and the water my dear people of god see the story line all through the new testament what jesus intended as he spoke to nicodemus what paul is writing to the ephesian church stand on the same line of truth that he might present it to himself so that he might present the church to himself in splendor without spot 
or wrinkle or any such thing. See what is in the mind of Jesus Christ. See what he is working towards. Okay. Now, let us compare this definition here in Ephesians to what happened in the book of Acts of the Apostles. See the lifestyle of those people. Even the passage that we chose last week, Acts chapter 6, 1 to 7. Were these characters found in those people whom the apostle chose to solve the problem? Absolutely. Seven men, they were not apostles, but full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom. Were they moving towards this strategy? Absolutely. They were moving towards this strategy. And they were part of the body of Christ. My dear people of God, we need to think through. If we just listen, it's of no use. We need to think through and see whether these truths are present in the Acts of the Apostles. Whether these truths are present in my church and your church. Is, it, is these truths present in my family? My dear people of God, very crucial for us to understand. It's no point working on the organization unless you focus your attention on the organisms, the fellowship. Where there is the Holy Spirit, there is the fellowship, the fellowship of the Spirit. And where there is the fellowship, there is the church. Let me repeat it once again. Where there is the Holy Spirit, there is the fellowship. Where there is the Holy Spirit, there is the fellowship. If the fellowship is not strong in your church, it means the Holy Spirit is not present. Where there is the Holy Spirit, there is a fellowship, the fellowship of the Spirit. And where the fellowship of the Spirit, there is a church. In other words, where the Holy Spirit is, there is a church. And conversely, where the Holy Spirit is not, there is not the church. Sadly, many of our churches are without the Holy Spirit and fellowship. And we are praying, working, building without the master plan of Jesus Christ. And my dear people of God, it will not work. No matter how much we struggle in that line. So we need to understand whether I am Aligning myself towards this strategy of Jesus. Come with me to John's Gospel again. John's Gospel chapter 6. Verses from 31 onwards. It speaks about... It speaks about the bread, the living bread. Okay? So we will read from 31 onwards. Our fathers ate the manna... In the wilderness as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus then said to them. Truly, truly, I say to you. It was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven. But my father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven. And gives life to the world. They said to him. Sir. Give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger. And whoever believes in me shall never thirst. But I said to you that you have seen me and yet do not believe. All that the Father gives me will come to me. And whoever comes to me I will never cast out. 38. For I have come down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I should lose nothing of all that he has given me, but raise it up on the last day. 
for this is the will of my father that everyone who looks on the son and believes in him should have eternal life and i will raise him up on the last day my dear people of god this evening we need to focus on this passage and see which are which are those crucial words in this passage there is the word last day there is the word eternal life there is the word living bread there is the word there is a word which is which is part of their which is which was part of jesus and he says it is the word bread and he compares himself to the bread i am the bread of life my dear people of god there is the word life there is the word bread there is the word eternal life there is the word last day so many things are defined in this passage the symbol depicts the fellowship isn't it the symbol also depict the strategy of jesus and that was clearly understood by saint paul that's why he wrote in ephesians 5 all that is that we discuss this evening my dear people of god we need to understand the strategy of jesus if not we may lose the whole battle we will lose our ground on the last day would you like to be raised on that last day then strategy is very important there is a goal to achieve and that goal will give us the grace to be risen on that last day the bread of heaven is jesus christ that is why we do not have life in our churches the life is the bread of heaven which is jesus christ what he expects he expects us to cooperate to his strategy and what is his strategy to present to himself the assembly in glory not having spot or wrinkle or any of such things but that it may be holy and unblemished are you working towards the strategy of jesus christ is kmc working towards the strategy of jesus christ my dear people of god this evening we need to make a decision a decision because the revelation has been revealed revealed in a in a way that we understand and that revelation is the strategy of jesus christ for his church as husband and wife become one and merge with each other sacrifice themselves for each other in a similar way god wants you and your church to be merged together god wants you and your church to be merged to each other so that you can give your life to the church you can give your life to the fellowship so that that fellowship will nurture the church in a way that god expects my dear people of god very crucial as we saw the gospel of john also we saw something related to the kingdom on the last day raising up on the last day what if if we are if we are part of the church whole of our life and if we do not know the strategy of jesus and we have come to an end of our lives and lose our life on one day and on that final last day if jesus says all your journey is without the strategy what can i do for you then what would be your answer and mine strategy is a very crucial word you have a strategy to your family isn't it 
you know what your children needs to become don't church, take the church lightly the pastors are appointed in the church for a strategy the fellowship is been is been discovered in the methodist denomination it is according to the age we have the fellowship for every age group why strategy strategy of jesus christ for his church what on that last day if god tells me pastor navin you have worked all through your life 40 years 50 years as a minister and you do not know the strategy of the church and you worked and worked and worked and worked on and on the last day if he says to me i do not know who you are then what would be my answer to him come back to the truth my dear people of god it is very very easy to do politics in the church it's very very easy to dominate the church because not much opposition in the church people come just to worship and then go off you do not have much uh, you do not have much of the restriction you can dominate as you want but it is dangerous says the word if you want to continue do it do it because the church defines the, the word defines that there is a last day and on that last day you need to raise before the throne for the last day god has given a bread from heaven jesus christ he says in 635 i am the bread of life whoever comes to me shall not hunger if you want to live you need to eat the life which can give you the life the bread of life if you do not eat the bread of life you will die if you want to eat the bread of life you need to follow the strategy of the one who gives the bread can we be part of a church without the strategy yes there are different strategies to different churches but we need to see what is the strategy of jesus for his church that is very crucial and one more thing and we will conclude today come to me again to see another relationship which is very crucial for us to understand in ephesians same letter ephesians chapter 2 verse from 14 onwards i read from the esv for he himself is our peace who has made us both one and has broken down in his flesh the dividing wall of hostility by abolishing the law of commandments expressed in ordinances that he might create in himself one new man in place of the two so making peace and might reconcile us both to god in one body through the cross thereby killing the hostility and he came and preached peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near for through him we both have access in one spirit to the father so then you are no longer stranger strangers or aliens but you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of god built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets christ himself being the cornerstone in whom the whole structure being joined together grows into a holy temple in the lord in him you also are being built together into a dwelling place for god by the spirit very crucial passage you know what is hidden behind this passage it is the kingdom of god 
Jesus has a strategy. Why? It is to lead the church to the kingdom that he will establish, that he has established. We need to understand that it is very important to give ourselves to the strategy of Jesus that we find in Ephesians 5, 22 onwards, 25 and 27. And then the strategy, if it is completely absorbed into us, will lead us into the kingdom of God. This passage speaks about that. It speaks about fellow citizens. It speaks about the members of the household in verse 19. It speaks about the foundation. It speaks about the whole structure joined in the cornerstone, Jesus Christ. It speaks about building up in verse 22. My dear people of God, these words are very, very crucial for the body of Christ. The foundation is important. Joining together, stone by stone to the cornerstone is very crucial. If you build, it should be magnificent. And that magnificent building is a glory to God. Why? Because it represents the kingdom of God. My dear people of God, has this given you any idea of the church that you belong to? Yes, it is crucial. It is crucial because this is the household of God. Every person is important. It is not Jews only, but Jews and the Gentiles. Everyone is important. It, it is easy to do the politics in the church. Again, I repeat it. You know why? Because many are being deceived by their own selves by doing the politics in the church. It is easy to do politics in the church, but to commit yourself to the fellowship, it is very hard. To make room for others into the fellowship is very hard. To commit yourself to these four pillars of truth in the body of Christ is very hard. The teachings of the apostles, the fellowship, the breaking of bread and the prayer. My dear people of God, your life should give space for other brother and other sister in the fellowship for all these four. If you become hindrance, then you will see the consequences. If you are not part of the fellowship for these four and want to become something in the organization, that too has its own consequences. Work on becoming the organisms. God in the right time will lift you up to that leadership, power, uh, leadership position. I invite your reflections on this. Discuss. Discuss these things. Very crucial for us to understand because body of Christ has a strategy and that strategy will lead you into heaven. It is for all those who come into the fellowship. Yes, there is a problem in every church. It was there in the first century, it was there in the second century, it is there in the third century, it is there in the 22nd century. The problem in the church will exist even after 22nd year, in the year of the Lord. It will be there in 2030 also. But through these problems, we need to work on the strategy of Jesus Christ. Work on it. Think through it. One life. We do not know when this life will evaporate from our lives. It will, we do not know when it will be taken away. Just recently, 
I met one of my friends who works in the bank. She told me that a customer came to the bank to draw the money and took the token and he was waiting. When the turn came for him to take the money, he was just dozing off in the seat and people went to wake him up to go and take this cash. My dear people of God, that man had already passed away. In the counter, we do not know when the life will be taken away. Isn't it that important for us to know where we belong? Isn't it that important to know the strategy of our master? Isn't it that important to work on something which will lead us into heaven according to the word of God? Think through it. Reflect back so that we can all learn together. If we will not work according to the master plan of the master, it will not work. You may do thousand things, it will not work. It has not worked for the past 2000 years, it will not work now, it will not work after 100 years as well. Because there is a plan and God is committed to his plan. I and you needs to commit to his plan unless and until we do that. We will lose our life, we will lose our fellowship, we will lose our church, we will lose our career, we will lose everything that we have in this world. The world that we are living in is a dark world. My dear people of God, we need the wisdom and the power of the Holy Spirit. That's why just one small 10 minutes meeting. Last week we studied on Acts of the Apostles 6, 6, 1 to 7. The problem arose and the apostles were called in. The apostles called the gathering, suggested one suggestion. And according to that one suggestion, they chose seven men full of the Holy Spirit and of wisdom and handed over them after ordaining them laying of hands to the church and they moved on. That solution has worked. That is why we are here this evening studying that word. It works. The master plan of Jesus works. It works for you. It works for your children. It's going to work for your grand great grandchildren. It's going to work in your whole family lineage. No matter how many generations will come out of your life. It is going to work. Work on the strategy of Jesus for the church. May God add his blessings. I invite again all of you to reflect back and respond and speak and discuss. Questions, if you have any questions, please get back to me. Let us look to the Lord in prayer. Loving Lord, thank you for this blessed strategy that you had given to us through Apostle Paul. Apostle Paul also learned these strategies, Lord, from the book of the Acts of the Apostles. And then, Lord, he is advising the Ephesian church to become one with the strategy. Today, you are advising, you are speaking to the KMC. As you spoke to the Ephesian church, you are speaking to the KMC to be part of the strategy. Yes, Lord, it is very, very crucial for us to be, to be acceptable in your sight. Because you are thinking of sanctifying the church. You are thinking of cleansing the church. You are thinking of presenting the church to yourself in splendor. Lord, give us the grace to work on it. As individuals, as Christian families, as Christian church, help us to align ourselves according to your strategy so that we might be a blessing here and now for ourselves, for our families, for our children, for our great-grandchildren and also to the fellowship that we are part of through the church. In Jesus' most blessed name we pray. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest and abide with all those who are passionate 
to work on the strategy of Jesus Christ now and forevermore. Amen. Oh